What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, my name is Travis. Today I'm going to be showing you the Avast Marine DIY Skimmer Swabby Kit. Now if you're not familiar with what a Skimmer Swabby does, it's actually a device that cleans the inside neck of your skimmer cup, allowing your skimmer to function at 100% at all times, as well as cutting down on the maintenance on that skimmer cup when it comes to cleaning it out either on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I use the NIOS Quantum 300 Protein Skimmer, which has a massive skimmer cup. Now, I am currently emptying this skimmer cup out twice a week due to the way I like to skim, which is more on the wet side of things. And uh, it's just a pain in the butt, picking it up, taking it upstairs, dumping it in the sink, cleaning it out, bringing it back down. It's just one thing that I don't like doing, and I definitely don't look forward to doing twice a week. So with that said, I went ahead and picked up this DIY skimmer swabby kit from Avast Marine. And in this video, I'll show you guys everything you need to do to actually uh, wire this kit, install it on your skimmer cup, set it up on the skimmer itself, as well as some of the programming inside the Apex. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Now to get your hands on this kit, it's pretty simple. Just go to avastmarine.com, go to their catalog, go to you bill, and then go to the swabby kit. At that point, you're just going to select the voltage, and then you need to determine uh, what size uh, wiper is appropriate for your cup. Just measure the neck here, match it up to the uh, diagram, and then select the appropriate size. Now, there are two options here. Uh, as you can see here, it says lid not included. Now, they do sell an Avast uh, version of this that actually uh, comes with the lid and all the motor and all that stuff here, which you can just put together and put on your cup. Or you can go the route that I went, which is the DIY kit here, but... I went ahead and mailed out the lid to my cup, which they drilled and set it up perfectly. So it actually is the same lid that was on the NIOS Quantum 300, but just has the appropriate holes and screws and all that stuff to fit this kit. So if you want to go that route, just hit the contact us and they'll be more than happy to take care of that. It's like a week turnaround time, so it's a pretty good deal. All right, so the first thing you're going to do here to put this together is go ahead and grab the motor and the wiper shaft. Now, there is going to be a key side of it with an Allen screw. Just go ahead and slide that together and fasten it down with the provided Allen wrench. All right, once you have the shaft attached to the motor, go ahead and pick up the acrylic U-shaped spacer here. Now, this is where you're going to attach the motor. Just like you see here in the video, line it up perfectly uh, just like that, and then add one of the two screws on either side. Now, you're going to want to leave the other side open because we will be uh, using uh, the other screw and the green uh, ground wire on that other side. So just go ahead and attach it real quick, and then we'll move over to the ground wire. Now, when it comes to the ground wire, just go ahead and slide the screw through the end of the wire and attach it to the acrylic base, and you should be good to go. Tuck it out of the way because we're going to use it here in a couple minutes. All right, now that that's done, let's go to move over to the housing base. Now, what you want to do is take the provided sandpaper and start sanding out the inner hole of that base. Now, I'll show you guys here on the screen the angle you should be striving to sand at. And what this does is it opens it up just enough so you can slide in the yellow uh, shaft seal. Now what this seal does is it prevents water from coming up into the engine causing damage over time and just by sanding it out allows it to be a, a little bit better a fit that you just won't be able to get when it's manufactured so using that sandpaper again will allow you to have a snug fit on that shaft seal. Now when it comes to adding this seal you're still going to have to work at it just a little bit to get it uh, kind of uh, snug and flush with that housing unit base. And uh, what you want to do is just make sure that it's in there all the way and that it's not crooked or anything like that and you should be good to go. All right, once the seal is in place, go ahead and put the motor shaft through that seal and attach the motor to the uh, housing via the acrylic screws provided in the kit. All right, now that we have all that attached, let's go ahead and grab the motor housing and glue it to the housing base. What you're going to use is the provided acrylic glue. Just put it in the groove there on the housing base and slide the uh, motor housing in there. Now you're going to want to twist it around where the whole opening is actually at the back of the motor where the wiring is. It will make it a lot easier when it comes to setting up the rest of the wiring within the unit. Once the glue is dried, go ahead and grab your power cord here and slide it through the opening of the liquid tight uh, cord grip. Now what this does is it actually uh, is going to slide all the way through and then slide the cord uh, into the base of the unit. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and take that uh, grip there and screw it in place. It's going to be threaded on the back housing, so it's going to just slide right in there and uh, tighten up without any issues. Now, what this does is uh, it holds the cord in place, but we're still going to use a zip tie later on just to make sure it doesn't slide out or cause any stress to the wiring inside the unit. All right, now that we have everything assembled, let's go and move on to wiring up the Suave. Now the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take the green ground wire from your power cord and attach it to the green uh, ground wire that you had on the side of your motor there. Go ahead and uh, tighten it up and then use the provided nut wire to hold it in place. 
All right, now that the ground wire is done, go ahead and grab both of the red wires and attach them to each other. Now, if you want to go ahead and trim back all three of those wires just a little bit because you don't need a lot of excess wire for the next part of the setup. All right, the next thing you want to do here is take your terminal block and attach your red wires to the middle section of that block. Now, just go ahead and tighten it down with a flat-headed screwdriver and it'll hold the wires in place. Now once that's done, go ahead and take the provided capacitor and attach it to the terminal block. You'll see that there are two holes on either side of the red wire there and just slide it in place. Now don't tighten it down yet because we're going to go ahead and attach the black wire to one side and the yellow wire to the other side. Now it is a little tricky there. You're going to want to have to hold the wire and the capacitor at the same time, but fiddle around for a little bit and it shouldn't be a problem and then just tighten everything down with that flat headed screwdriver. Now once that side of the terminal block is taken care of, let's go ahead and attach the power cord uh, to that block. Now uh, it's going to be dependent on if you're using a US standard or an international power cord. I went ahead and put the information here on the screen so you know which is which. Now in my case I am using a, a US standard which is the uh, black and white wires. The black will be the hot and then the white will be the neutral. So what you want to do is go ahead and attach the black to the red wire basically on the opposite side of that terminal block and then attach the yellow to the white wire there again on the other side of that terminal block. All right, now that the wiring is done, let's go ahead and add our zip tie, as I mentioned before, to the inside of that black power cord. Again, this is going to prevent it from ever coming out all the way or causing unnecessary stress to the wiring within the unit. Go ahead and snip it off, tuck everything inside the housing unit there, and you're ready to go ahead and install the cap. Now when it comes to installing this cap, go ahead and put on your Avast Marine Works sticker on the top of it, and then you can go ahead and use some silicone, reef safe silicone, within the inside of that cap to attach it to the top of the housing unit. Now if you want, you can also use a couple drops of super glue, but I would not fill up the whole thing with super glue because you'll never get it off. But with a couple drops, you'll be able to twist it later on if you ever need to do any work to the motor or change it out or whatnot, and it will be perfectly fine to remove it that way. So it's up to you. Use a little bit of super glue or go ahead and use the silicone. Now that everything's done, go ahead and plug in the motor to make sure that everything turns on and that the shaft is rotating. Once that's all set, go ahead and turn it off and let's go ahead and move on to the wiper part of the build and get this onto the skimmer. Now when it comes to setting up the wiper, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and use the provided rivets to attach the silicone blade to the wiper itself. Once that's done, it's time to go ahead and attach the motor to the top of the skimmer cup. Now because I had this cut out the size, everything's going to line up perfectly and then just fasten it down with the provided acrylic screws. All right, now that the motor is in place, it's time to go ahead and add the wiper to the shaft. Now what you want to do is go ahead and take the provided stainless steel screw, slide it through, and bolt it down. Now don't tighten it up all the way yet because we want to go ahead and kind of see how it fits within the skimmer cup neck there, and then make adjustments before tightening down the screw. Now the screw is going to be uh, closer to the blade side of things, and then the shaft will be on the outer side of the wiper. Now the reason why it's like this is because the screw is going to prevent the wiper from sliding into the shaft more, allowing it to have pressure against the inside of the skimmer cup. Now once you figured out where you want it to be, go ahead and tighten down that screw to prevent the blade from sliding back. All right, well here is the first look at the skimmer swabby in action. As you can see, it's really tight against the cup neck there, causing the cup to actually move a little bit. So what I did is I just went in there, uh, loosened up the screw and moved the blade back just a hair to allow it to uh, touch the side of the inner neck of that cup, but not enough so it's actually moving it around. All right, now that everything is lined up and working perfectly, it's time to install this on the Niles Quantum 300. Now, what I'm gonna use here is a one half inch a tube that I picked up from Home Depot as my drainage tube. Now, it actually fits perfectly over the drainage cap of my skimmer cup, and I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the stand here, drill a hole through the stand and run that tube down and to the right of that stand where it will actually drain into a one gallon jug for right now. Now I do plan on adding the Avast Marine uh, collection cup here in the future which has a built-in float valve that will uh, turn off the skimmer if the skimmate gets too high within there protecting it from overflowing and causing a flood. Now the last thing I did here is add a little bit of super glue to the bottom of my skimmer cup holding that tube in place. Now even though it was a tight fit and I really wasn't worried about it falling off anytime soon, but over time it might become loose and then eventually fall off causing the skimmate to go directly back into the skimmer section. So a little bit of super glue fixed that problem. 
All right, now that our cup is secured and our drain port is taken care of, let's go ahead and add the skimmer swabby. Now, because it was test fitted on the workbench and everything worked just fine, we're just gonna go ahead and slide it in place and attach the motor to our Apex EBA bar. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to the Apex real quick, show you the programming and how I have that outlet set up, and then we'll move back over and I'll show you how it works. All right, so here is the Nio Swabby timer outlet. Now, I have it here set to advance, and then I went ahead and set up an OSC timer. So basically every 360 minutes, which is every six hours, is going to go ahead and kick on for three minutes, allowing it to rotate multiple times within the neck there, and then it's going to go ahead and turn back off. That's it. It's just going to kick on every six hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, keeping that skimmer neck clean. All right, well, here is the skimmer swabby in action. As you guys can see, it doesn't go very fast, but it does work. It really does. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and show you guys what it looked like a week later, some of the skimmate and kind of how the skimmer cup looks overall. Okay, as you guys can see, the cup itself is dirty, but the neck is clean. Now, that's all that matters. As long as the neck stays clean, the skimmer will continue to work at 100%, giving you guys the proper filtration for your reef tank. Now, if you guys want to check out one of these skimmer swabbies, definitely go to avastmarine.com. Tell them that Fish of Hex sent you and pick one up for your skimmer. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.